Hi, this is Asa, and welcome to my audio experience. This show is about you. It's about your health and your life. Kick this segment off and go with John. Hi, John. Welcome to the show, my friend. How can I help? Hey, nice meeting you. Um, I was traveling through Nashville last week, and, um, well, back in 2002, I was diagnosed with malignant tumor in the tonsil. And um, it was um, uh, radiated and uh, chemo, and uh, I am completely recovered. But, um, Fantastic. Re- yes, around, I'm sorry, I'm on the cell phone. I'm hoping it won't break up on me. Um, I'm Go ahead. Around 3 o'clock in the, uh, e- uh, in the morning, I suddenly wake up almost every night, almost religiously at 3 o'clock. And um, if I don't take uh, one sleeping pill and maybe some ibuprofen, I'd probably be, you know, in bed waiting to try to go to sleep again. But that seems to help within a half an hour or so. I go back to sleep until 8 o'clock uh, in the morning. Uh, I'm not sure if that's necessarily the greatest thing for me to do, but um, it does work. Do you have any solutions uh, other than the uh, sleeping pill? Sure. You had chemo. Let me run down a couple things with you. So you had chemotherapy for the tumor. And how many treatments did you have? I had 30 in a row in the morning. Yeah, 30 of them for radiation. Okay. And chemo was uh, three treatments. Three treatments. And that's been how long ago? Uh, 2002. All right. A lot of times when the the sleeping issues begin occurring and you wake up at 3 in the morning on the dot, that tends to be the, the rhythm time. What happens is on the acupuncture meridian, which is, you know, based on Eastern medicine, but on the acupuncture meridian scale, then the liver tends to be the primary organ at that time. So if the liver is really pushing out a lot of toxins of the body and that sort of thing, it can wake you up at around 2 to 3 at night, every night. And it's the biorhythm of your body that does that. And so it's it's pretty simple that, you know, every organ has a time period during the day that it seems to be either regenerating or you know, in the process of working. And the liver tends to regenerate and work around it, its hardest to kind of help the body regenerate around 2 or 3 in the morning. Now, there's another thing that could be taking into place, and that could be excess levels of calcium in your body. Now, when you go through chemotherapy and radiation, you sometimes can get, as a rebound effect, an excess amount of calcium, meaning that you know, the normal calcium that you would eat in your foods every single day could be ele- could cause the calcium in your body to become elevated. So that's one thing that could be happening. And if, if calcium gets elevated, it can cause you to wake up in the middle of the night. And that could be anywhere between 2 and 4 in the morning. So there's some, there's some what's going on. That's what could be going on. Now, solutions for that are this. You've gone through some pretty serious treatments, which has been really hard on your body. So what have you done since then to, I mean, you've made it through cancer, so what has been your strategy? I mean, I'm sure you've changed your lifestyle, the way you eat, exercise, and all of that, or have you not? Uh, well, I'll tell you, I haven't really been doing too much. I take the once-a-year um, uh, exam, and uh, basically that's it. But when you said toxins in the liver, I do have a few beers at night, so I wouldn't be surprised if that doesn't hurt. I hurt, and uh, maybe the toxins in the liver is probably like my problem. It could be, and I'll tell you this, you know, just on that note, if you haven't done anything since cancer as far as helping your body to regenerate. Let me break this down for you real, real. If this is going to make it real easy to understand. The body regenerates every single day. So each day, old cells die off and new cells form. Cancer cells are nothing more than abnormal cells. That's all it is. And so, you know, that, that's why the chemotherapy and the radiation and, you know, for some people, surgery, you know, can help as well because you go in and you do everything you, to kill the cancer cells. The issue is what are you doing to give your body the raw materials every single day so we can rebuild good new healthy cells because if there's a genetic involvement and with cancer there is a genetic involvement but it's mostly lifestyle choices meaning you know the the air that we breathe the water that we drink the foods that we eat the exercise we get or don't get stress that we manage or don't all of that you know they all play key roles into our overall health but the eating issue is the biggest one with cancer because your body makes good new healthy cells based on the foods you eat. If you give it junk food, you're going to make junk cells. If you give it good food, you're going to make good cells. Mm -hmm. You have already had cancer. And so the greatest thing you can do, and the greatest thing I can encourage you to do, 
is to make great choices every single day. Mm-hmm. And once you've had it, you know, that, that, that doesn't eliminate you from not having it again. And so, but, but your choices do. The American right. Cancer Society said that two-thirds of cancers could be virtually eliminated if people would change their lifestyle choices. Mm-hmm. That's staggering. But that's right. good news. Yes. So let me, let me empower you how to do that. I would cut out the alcohol because alcohol is a, a depressant yeah. and it is hard on your liver. And, of course, you had you know cancer in the tonsil. However, the liver, everything in the body, for the most part, goes through the liver. It's the, it's the body's toxin center, filtration center. It's, it's, I mean, the, the liver is very important. It's as important as your heart is to pumping blood. And, you know, I, I'm not saying don't enjoy yourself, but, you know, I would, I would pick to do a beer every now and then. When I say that, I mean, you know, a couple times a month at the most without being too strict. But just understand that within your life now, I mean, John, how old are you? What, what is your age now? I'm uh, 62. Yes, you're 62. You've lived a great life and you've got many more years ahead of you. And if you play your cards right and you and make the right choices, then you can live into your 80s and 90s and beyond and live well. It's, it's, I mean, it, it is, it's, it's very true, but you just have to come to a place where you make the right choices. And, and the things you eat every day is going to be a big deal. You know, and cutting down the beer, I know that's not a, a big thing probably for you to do, but it's going to be important the things you're eating every day. So for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, being strategic. In my book, Empowering Your Health, I talk about an anti-inflammatory diet. And you'll hear me talk about that a lot on the show. Because the foods we put inside of our body either reduce inflammation so that our body can make good, new, healthy cells, or it increases inflammation, and it causes our body not to be able to do that. And once you've beaten cancer, which I think is just amazing, I love hearing those stories, now you need to come up with a good game plan. And the good game plan is to begin following these principles and it's, it's real simple. It's equal amounts of lean protein sources, low glycemic carbohydrates in the form of fruits and vegetables, and good healthy fats, the omega-3s, 6s, and 9s. You know, those are all important. I'll tell you some things daily for you that are going to be important. The things daily would be B12 in the version of adenosyl psychobolamine. It's an A version of B12. Broccoli seed extract, high amounts of vitamin C, around five to 7,000 milligrams. Keep all your antioxidants high. But the sleeping issue... If you will increase your vitamin D, it will absorb any excess calcium. And if you'll take phosphatidylcholine at night before bed, that will help you go into a deep sleep and it will help with the liver and how it pushes out toxins to put you into a deeper REM sleep. But with you, my friend, the biggest issue is getting your lifestyle choices solid. Then you'll be on your way to extraordinary health. This is On Call, 888-283-7272. Want to turn back the clock 15 years and have more energy? This is Dr. Asa telling you to just breathe with LiveO2. LiveO2 delivers the right amount of oxygen we need for optimal health. Go to LiveO2.com. That's LiveO2.com. To find out more, connect with On Call Radio online at mchasenetwork.com. You're listening to On Call, the show that's empowering your health. Thanks for joining me on the program. If you need a new prescription for your life, make an appointment right now, 888-283-7272, or send me an email. We had an email come in. Cynthia from Spokane, Washington, writes, I've been struggling with hot flashes. I'm only 39 years young. What in the world should I do? Well, Cynthia, it all depends. Several things can cause hot flashes. Could you be going into early menopause? It's a possibility, but very unlikely. You probably could have your estrogens 
could be out of balance. And there's three main estrogens. There's estrone, estradiol, and estriol. And a lot of times only one of those gets checked if there are any hormones checked by most physicians. So it's good to have all three checked along with your progesterone. And I would have testosterone checked. Get all those done by a blood test by your primary care physician. Let them look at the numbers and see what's going on. That is one of the primary issues a lot of times when you're having hot flashes. Now, there's another one what you can need to look at is blood sugar related issues. So if you're headed toward diabetes, a lot of times it can mimic hot flashes that are similar to menopause. So that's something you want to look into as well. So their blood sugar, they can check your glucose levels on blood tests and then also your hemoglobin A1C. That shows more of the long-term blood sugar over the last three months or so and how well it's been doing. You want to make sure you keep that A1C. That's kind of the marker they're using nowadays. You want to keep that under 6.0 for sure to stay away from that pre-diabetes range, but I would get that checked out. Now, in the meantime, there is a good overall balancer for women's estrogen that's just phenomenal, and it works very well. It's called black cohosh. been used for many, many years and works very well with women, especially as they get into their late 30s, early, early 40s when they're experiencing these types of symptoms. So I encourage you to look into that. Your health food store should carry it. You're listening to the On Call, the show that's empowering your health. If you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, give us a call, 888-283-7272. Let's go to Joseph. Hi, Joseph. Welcome to the show, my friend. How can I help? Back in uh, 2005, in December, while I was... Hey, Joseph. Yes, sir. If you could speak up a little bit, just okay. put your mouth closer to the phone. Be there great. we go. I have a cheap There you phone. go. Sorry, doctor. Uh, that's all right. The, doc, the doctor fixed the phone right off. Now, uh, back in 2005, <laughs> December, I uh, was uh, poisoned by carbon monoxide. And I, I knew I was being poisoned uh, for a long time because uh, I had a uh, gas meter that the company gave me. And when I got poisoned the worst, the meter was reading extremely high amounts, 195 to 587 parts per million. Okay. Uh, and then, you know, of course, I started uh, feeling real sick. And then after I had gone to the hospital and they gave me oxygen, I started feeling better. And uh, I was okay for a while. And then about, uh, I don't know, three or four weeks later, I just started feeling real sick and real tired all the time. My ears were ringing real bad. I had been sick, like with colds and flu, for a long time during the period of time I was being poisoned, at least for about two or three months, and it was a continuous illness. And uh, it's one thing after another, just like colds, flus, upper respiratory infections. I had sores all over my body. My hair was falling out of my head by the hands full. Uh, the sores wouldn't go away. They wouldn't heal. They kept multiplying, actually. And so anyway, uh, I ended up seeing my doctor, and I blacked out in front of him during an examination. And he said, well, you know, that's not good, and you can't go back to work like that. And uh, since I'd been diagnosed so many times during the course of a month and a half at an emergency room with the carbon monoxide poisoning, I just figured maybe if I'm just out for a while and they just, you know, figure out just exactly what's wrong with me, I'll be okay and I can go back. But sure. I just never got better. I just kept being sick. And right. finally... Um, I'm going to a hospital now uh, for the past uh, two years because uh, I've been out of work for over three and a half years now, and uh, the, I've had night sweats and sudden sweats and and, and periods where my uh, it seems like my just my hands and my feet are ice cold, and then my right and hand and foot will warm up, and then my left hand and foot will warm up, and then I'll be okay, and then sometimes I'll just be uh, pushing the cart in a shopping mall or whatever, going to the store, and then all of a sudden I almost black out. I get extreme busy. My ears ring constantly, both of them high, low. Uh, it's like pinging a crystal glass. And then all of a sudden it reaches a crescendo, but it just keeps going, never stops. And clicking noises and popping noises. And uh, aside from all that, you know, the, I started blacking out when I was going uh, driving. And I don't drive anymore, doctor. Uh, I had common okay. sense enough to stop. But the fact is I started blacking out at stop signs and uh, almost passing out behind the wheel in traffic. And, uh, you know, and it just it just started happening walking down the street, uh, you know, uh, here, there, and everywhere. And or my body just jerking and, and uh, uncontrollably and biting my tongue all night long and, and uh, can't sleep. I've had insomnia for the past uh, three and a half plus years. So now 
now since I've been to get into the hospital, uh, besides uh, the carbon monoxide poisoning, they're telling me I've got uh, spina bifida coda. I've got, uh, I know I have two herniated discs in my neck from an accident over 17 and a half years ago. Uh, and I have osteoarthritis and, and Meniere's disease, and they put me on a low-salt diet because I have elevated blood level, uh, pressure, blood pressure and absent-mindedness and all these other things just keep going on and on. It's like some kind of, uh, I hit the roulette wheel of nightmare symptoms after this carbon monoxide poisoning. Sure. Oh, yeah. So uh, what I've done recently, uh, and that after the low-salt diet started, that my stomach, because I had acid reflux, I'm taking a lot of pain medication with these other diseases and everything, and the Neurontin 300 milligrams they're giving me is helping control the seizures. I haven't had any blackouts since that period of time. And it's controlling a lot so the, of these other ones. So, so the uh, blackouts just, have pretty much stopped. Uh, is that right? Yeah, the seizures stopped. It's just that the uh, the sweats, the ringing in my ears, uh, the absent-mindedness, and uh, just being tired all the time has pretty much gone on. So what I did was I started to uh, I used some of your advice I, because I was having a few problems. So I started taking uh, some uh, supplements. And uh, I'll tell you what, I some, listen, uh, hang, hang tight for just a second. We're going into a commercial break. And we come out, we'll talk about all these issues from carbon monoxide poisoning. Now it's throwing you into a kind of a tailspin with a lot of different symptoms from, you know, insomnia to Meniere's disease and just all kinds of issues. Let me, let's talk about how to get out of where you are when we come out of this commercial break. Hang tight. Questions about your health, 888-283-7272, 888 On call. Hi, it's Asa. I'm giving you a copy of my best-selling book for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book. All you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to asarx.com and get your free book today. Lines are open this hour as we talk about life and talk about health. 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. This is On Call, the show where your health is your greatest wealth. I'm your health and lifestyle coach. This is Healthy Talk Radio. Thanks for joining me on the program. If you'd like to participate in the show, you can jump in and call 888-283-7272. Check in. Get on the phone and let's get well. 888-283-7272. Or visit us online. Going into the break, talking with Joseph. And Joseph's been going through several things. One of the biggest things is he got carbon monoxide poisoning, threw him into a tailspin. Now he's been struggling. His ears have been ringing, which can lead to Meniere's disease. And also you've got issues with insomnia, and you've got uh, issues with a herniated disc, osteoarthritis. And go into a little bit of where you are now. You're very tired, fatigued. And what are you looking to accomplish? You want to get out from where you are? You want to just have a better quality of life? Talk to me a little bit, Joseph. Well, what I'd like to, what I'm trying to figure out is, and uh, because I'm not the doctor, and and uh, the doctors don't, uh, they haven't finished with me because it's they're going through so much trying to cover everything. But uh, can a tethered spinal cord cause seizures? Because they haven't told me why I was having the seizures. All I know is that the seizures have stopped since they've been giving me this medication. And uh, and, and, and insomnia. I mean, it's just like, man, I haven't, uh, ex- with the exception of uh, just piling on uh, uh, the uh, naproxen sodium with the uh, Neurontin uh, and uh, eating bananas and chicken and drinking milk or ice cream or anything I can to try to induce some sleep, I I hardly ever get any sleep, uh, regular sleep, normal sleep. I'm, I've had sleep deprivation for over three and a half years. It's driving me nuts. I'm tired now, all the time, and it's uh, but okay, you've really worried about getting all the time. You've, had, you've, had, you've had sleep issues for the last for the last three and a half years. But let me ask you, in the last half years outside of the poisoning, how long has it been since you've been off work? Is it the sleep the sleep issues began when the carbon monoxide poisoning happened? Yes, they started. Or was that before? 
They started. Uh, I started having sleep issues just before the acute poisonings, uh, where I was actually falling asleep on the job. I just thought I was sleeping on the, you know, falling asleep from being overworked or anemia or something. But uh, once they gave me the gas meter, and then I found out I was being poisoned, and the doctors kept telling me, "Go find another job." Uh, for crying out loud, you can't just keep coming in here. Uh, then I realized something's happened to my body, and then I, you know, after that it was up to the doctors, and it's just been kind of a revolving door situation with the doctors ever since. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, I know when there's a side effect from medication, but the problem is, is, is all these uh, symptoms started before any medications. Uh, before I had no the medication illnesses. ever started. Yes, right. the only thing that was wrong with so, me was the herniated disc and the carpal tunnel in my left shoulder, and that, that wasn't going to cause seizures. Uh, you know, these no, other things. That, what, what kind of medication are you taking right now? Uh, uh, Neurontin, 300 milligrams, uh, four times a day. And uh, okay. I'm taking naproxen sodium, 220 milligrams, twice a day. Okay. All right. Here's, here's a, let me run down kind of a list of things for you and what I think might be beneficial that can, that can kind of aid in what you're going through. I think that, you know, once you've had carbon monoxide poisoning, the, the thing is, can the residual effect of that be, you know, lingering? It can. And what I recommend that you do, if you haven't already done so, is to even do, even though it's been some time, is to do some oral chelation. Because a lot of times some of the gases can stay trapped in the fatty tissues and the adipose tissue within the body. And it's good to have some oral chelation that will help pull that out of the body. It's important to do that in cleansing uh, on a regular basis. And, of course, your lymphatic system, which is the body's natural detoxification center, it, it can it will help eliminate a lot of this, but it's always good to do almost a, a cleanse, but it's an oral chelation. And, I mean, IV chelation would have been good right after the poisoning, but you're so far removed from that now. I think oral chel- chelation can be a benefit to you. And chlorella is a really good oral chelating agent. It's all natural, and it just helps the body reduce toxins. The other thing is, now, when you haven't slept in that long period of time, there's several things that can be going on. And remember, in natural medicine, we look at the body three different ways. We look at it mentally, chemically, and structurally. There's three main components to the body. It's called the health triangle, and that makes you look at all three primary areas. So just because you're not sleeping doesn't mean it's a direct you know, effect of carbon monoxide poisoning. There could be something else building up in the body, such as neurotransmitters, which are the brain chemicals that aren't firing the way they need to, and that typically is what affects sleep. And any anti-seizure medication or any medication that they're giving you in regards to that, they, they play around with neurotransmitters. As a matter of fact, most medicines do that. And there's noradrenaline and there is acetylcholine. All of these, if they're manipulated, they can change, literally change different processes in your body. But if you get those balanced, it can cause the body to work very, very well. So the, there's a couple of things. When you don't sleep, typically... It has to do with two primary neurotransmitters. Well, three actually, but two primary, one secondary. The two primary would be serotonin and then also acetylcholine. Those are the two primaries. Then GABA, which is an inhibitory brain chemical, it is one that has to do with anxiety, and it can also cause seizures. And so there's a couple things you'll want to look into. Now, the best thing to do is to ease into this. If they haven't pinpointed exactly which neurotransmitter is off, I would ask them to run some blood tests to see on that. Then also, in the meantime, it's never harmful to the body to play around with taking phosphatidylcholine because it's completely natural. It's a base of lecithin, which is very, very, I mean, it's completely natural, but it'll help support acetylcholine levels. And the best time to take that is at night before bed, about two to 3,000 milligrams. And if you're not sleeping very well, it can be an incredible sleep aid. Now, if you were suffering with depression, which it doesn't sound like you are, it would be leaning more toward the serotonin side of things. But usually acetylcholine is the one. It's the culprit. If you just can't go to sleep, you can't stay asleep. Now, of course, medication can be good for a short period of time. You just don't want to do it for the long run. But acetyl, you know, the phosphatidylcholine can make a big, big difference. The other list of issues that you have, even from the carpal tunnel and the, the little neuropathies that you have going on, those are from the structural side of the health triangle, the bones, muscles, and the nerves. And chemical things can affect that, but I would encourage you to go to someone that's more of a specialist in the structural side of things. And that would be either an osteopathic physician, which is a DO, or a chiropractic physician, which is a DC. Both of them are incredible at working on 
the neurological side of things if there's any type of nerve irritation or inflammation that can be going on causing the you know things like carpal tunnel. And let me tell you, most carpal tunnel issues originate in the neck, the base of the neck. That's where the nerve root starts, goes all the way down through the shoulder, the arms, all the way down through the palm of the hand, and that's what causes that many, many times. Herniated disc, same thing, same doctor. You'd want to see either one of those specialties. They can help tremendously with what you're going through with that osteoarthritis probably low vitamin D. Most people carry enough calcium. I would get a blood test to check on your vitamin D levels. Make sure your vitamin D running between 70 and 90 on the blood test. Now, Meniere's disease is a whole different animal. Even though you've had the, that poisoning of carbon monoxide, Meniere's disease typically can be a result of of food allergies within the body that cause issues with the ringing in the ears. And one can be a manganese deficiency where you can take around 100 milligrams a day of manganese. That can be helpful. Just follow those instructions on the bottle. You can get that at any health food store. Ionic manganese is the best, though. It's a liquid, and it's much better than tablets. But then also wheat allergy, which basically just wheat products from breads, pastas, cereals, crackers, things like that. All of those can be major issues causing and really issues within the right ear, and the manganese would be more in the left ear. Now, the fatigue and that sort of thing is definitely coming from the fact you're not sleeping. I would start there. The adrenal glands, which are the body's stress glands, those are, you know, when they get tired, when they get worn out, the things you eat every single day are going to be the things that help create the good new healthy cells. Make sure to follow the anti-inflammatory diet. You are what you eat. That is the foundation. Regardless of all the things that I've laid before you, what you eat every single day is going to determine the foundational basis of what your health is going to bring. And don't forget to add in a tablespoon of cod liver oil for the omega-3 fatty acids that your body desperately needs every single day. We don't get those in many of our foods at all. Thanks for the call, Joseph. Questions about your health, 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. If you need a new prescription for your life and you're sick and tired of being sick and tired, give us a call. This is On Call. We had an email come in. Sandra from Jacksonville, Florida. I've been struggling with fibromyalgia. It was diagnosed two years ago. I'm under a lot of stress, just gone through a divorce. What do you think it could be? Well, fibromyalgia typically roots itself in mental-related stressors. So if you go through an emotional stress, divorce, lose a child, loss of a job, whatever, that's when you see a lot of people get thrown into that constant tissue pain, connective tissue pain of fibromyalgia, that achiness all over, and doctors tend to diagnose that fairly regularly. So I want to encourage you to do this. Managing stress is going to be a real key for fibromyalgia. Fasting one day a week so the digestive system can clear itself out is really big. Anytime you have inflammation throughout the body. So with arthritis, you get inflammation in the joint. Fibromyalgia is a generalized inflammation around the body. Get started on what you eat. You have to increase your levels of vitamin B5 which is panathenic acid, that is a huge help. And increase your omega-3 fatty acids. I would get your vitamin D levels checked as well. Make sure they're between 70 and 90 on a blood test. But the, eating the anti-inflammatory diet that's in my book, Empowering Your Health, that is going to be a place to start because until you remove inflammation from the digestive tract, you can't remove inflammation throughout the body. This is On Call. Want to turn back the clock 15 years and have more energy? This is Dr. Rasa telling you to just breathe with LiveO2. LiveO2 delivers the right amount of oxygen we need for optimal health. Go to LiveO2.com. That's LiveO2.com. Connect with On Call Radio and watch On Call TV at InShapeNetwork.com. about your health, give us a call or go to the website inshapenetwork.com. That's inshapenetwork.com. We're here for you each and every day. If you're looking for a lifestyle provider, someone in your area that believes 
the same way we do. All this nutrition and lifestyle-based care we talk about, just go to the website. We can help you. And if you need me to answer in private, of course, we can do that as well. Happy to. So much going on with our company. Our television shows every single day. We want to get you to listen to that, catch that, watch that. It's all a great piece to be able to help you go to the next level with your health and your life. Let's get over to Wanda on the phones. Hi, Wanda. My husband um, has gone to the doctor. He's retaining fluid. The doctor says he needs fluid drained off his abdomen. He needs a liver biopsy. Um, He is an alcoholic, and I just don't know what to expect. Well, here's the thing, okay? He's already got, I know you're worried about him. I can hear that, okay? And I understand. When somebody has an addic- addiction and they're, 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 in, they're stuck in a behavior, whatever that is, okay? If, if they're stuck in that, then he's got to get to a place where he can overcome it, okay? And, and he has to want this. So even though it's de- we're dealing with fluid that can be dangerous somewhat to the body, he has to want because the liver itself is not going to get better unless he unless he stops. You understand that, right? So it's it's one of those deals where it, it'll continue to decline unless he's willing to step it up. So he has to really jump in and and make a difference in that realm. So I would encourage you. To, to make sure just to see if if he is in a place where he can get some help if, if it takes counseling if it takes support groups if it takes whatever to get him into a place where he's willing to to get better to to, to not be stuck where he is i mean all that really matters and that's one of the big keys that you have to look at for him is is seeing if he if he wants to get into that place because if not it'll just be a spiral it'll be just the, the same old same old same old same old same old it'll be continuing and it'll be all the time so you got to get him to a place where he's ready to to get out of that place and and really begin to thrive again and do well so that's a that's a big key got to focus got to get him focused got to get him to a place where he can do well and not be stuck where he is because it's tough that's not easy where he the the place he's in is not easy and the place he's in is is challenging to say the least so you got to get him to a place where he can he really do well and i'll tell you having a physician on board whether it's your family doctor or maybe an addiction specialist it'll be helpful but he's got to understand where he is with his health too okay that that makes a big difference he's got to understand the level that his health is in and where it's headed because if if he doesn't understand that then that's going to be a whole situation by itself got to understand that okay and we'll help any way we can if you want to we have nutritional type areas that he, he can look into to get inflammation down in the body but it's going to take it's going to take some radical help he needs he needs physical one-on-one help with someone to really get to that place he needs to really because the fluid in the liver all that is i mean i I have to tell you this it's almost secondary because all that's going to continue those are just symptoms and byproducts of poor choices his lifestyle is what's ruining his own health and i know you love him and, and i know that's why you're calling but until that root gets taken care of that's why i'm a huge firm believer i think medicine all we're doing for the most part is playing catch up I really do. I think our, if we can get to you and your lifestyle choices every single day and modify that, I think you can unravel most health challenges that we face today, all the way from diabetes, heart disease, the whole nine yards. I think we can knock out most of it. If, we can, if I can get your lifestyle under control, if I can get you making good choices, if I can get you going in the right direction, then all this other stuff is just, I mean, again, it's, it, it's not tough. Medicine manages, and it manages in an amazing way. I'm telling you, it's some of the best I've ever seen. Our school systems, training systems are absolutely amazing. But I think we need to spend more time getting to people on the front end to modify their choices every day. That is the absolute key. 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. You're listening to On Call Radio right here on the InShape Network. Go to InShapeNetwork.com. Let's go to Jana. Hi, Jana. 
Yes, hi. A very dear person to me was diagnosed with HER2 positive breast cancer, stage 3. And I was uh, wondering what you would suggest for that. All right. It's a, t- it's a tough one, okay? But the biggest thing is that is diet. Diet's going to play a big role in, in lifestyle choices. So exercise, I would say, hands down is going to be a p- big piece of this. And really six days a week is something that you want to start with. 15 minutes a day minimum, start out, well, tw- I'll say 12. 12 minutes a day minimum, six days a week, is going to be your starting point. And it needs to be at a, at a moderate intensity level. I always say if you're late for a flight or late for a meeting and you're walking, that's the pace you want to be at. It can't be a lollygag and it can't be walking your dog, okay, either one of those. Get out, get moving, get your body moving, get used to moving every single day. Your body was designed to move. And then eating habits, all right, getting fats up, healthy fats, up to about 30% of your overall diet calories, knowing what the calories need to be. And then there's all kinds of different buildup for the nutrition. But you need to get blood work done to find out what the nutritional deficiencies are to lay the groundwork to know what the body needs and what it doesn't. Then you can build a great game plan for overall success and get the body where it needs to go. All right. Puts another hour in the charts. I want to thank our producer, Jay Patrick, engineer, John Garrison, and the rest of the team. Go tell one person something you learned on the show. Together, we can transform the health of our friends, our families, and our communities. You're listening to the show that helps you get well, stay well, and live well. Do you know you can listen to the Asa RX audio experience on Spotify and Pandora? For all the ways to watch and listen, Check out our show page at asarx.com slash experience. Hi, it's Asa. I'm giving you a copy of my best-selling book for free to help you in your health journey today. I'll pay for the book. All you do is just cover the small shipping and handling costs. Go to asarx.com and get your free book today. This episode is over, but check episode notes for links to products and services you've heard about on this episode. Thanks for listening and subscribing. Please share the ASA RX audio experience with others and stay in touch by giving us your comment or review.